And so I uh, ended up running it. And uh, <laughs> I remember I ended up uh, finishing. And I ran into like the athletic trainer. Right. And he goes, uh, you must you must have ran a pretty fast time. I was like, well, why do you say that? He said, well, they look like they're in shock right now. Yo, well, I'm calling it right now. Tyler Scott going to have the fastest 40 at this year's combine. You know, I'm praying for you, man. I hope you do it, man. It ain't going to be nothing but good success for you. And whatever you um, projected to go is definitely going to shoot up the, up the draft boards for sure, man. I appreciate sure. it. Yeah, man, I've been I've been reading up on you a little bit. I ain't going to even lie, man, because, like, I kind of think our stories are kind of similar. Like, mm -hmm. me coming out of high school, like, you know, I I like I went to um state. I ended up finished second in the um state meet or whatever. I had all the stats in football and stuff, and I was still a two star. Um, I wasn't highly recruited and stuff like that. And I'm looking at I'm looking at your stuff, and I see like your um well your senior year you had 21 touchdowns, your junior year you had 27 touchdowns, like three kick returns, a receiving touchdown, and with all this speed. And still to be only a three star coming yeah. out, man. Like I, yeah. like I don't get it. And then like I went to East Carolina, you went to Cincinnati. Um, it's just like the all the big power five schools, like the big big schools, seem like they looked over us. Like, what what is your thoughts on that? And how do you use that as motivation? Yeah, so you know it was a crazy process actually in high school. Um, so I had got a new coach my going into my junior year, had no offers. <laughs> And um, ended up playing, had a really good, you know, junior year. And, uh, right. you know, after the season, I, had, I hadn't heard from nobody. Right. And so, you know, at the time I was like, man, you know, I, I know I had a good year, you know, but nobody's reaching out, you know, nothing like right. that. So my coach, I'm like, hey, you know, I would love an opportunity to play at the next level. And he was right. kind of opening eyes with me at the time, was just like, listen, um, you know, I don't really have any connects. Like, I'm not really sure. Like, he was young at the time, young head coach. He's like, I'm, I'm really not sure. Uh, you know, how to kind of get you there. He's like, I understand I got some on my hands, but I'm just not sure how to get it to the next level. Right. And so, uh, you know, matters upon my own hands. And, uh, you know, I ended up creating my own email. I created the email and uh, I put together my own highlight film uh, on Huddle. Uh, right. Created my own, like, kind of subject. You know, put my, my school, my 40-yard dash time, my GPA, mm -hmm. stuff like that, and just sent out, uh, you know, a little message saying, you know, how my name's, you know, Tyler Scott, current junior at Norton High School. You know, I love you can check out my film, you know, love to hear back. And right. so, you know, what I did was I'm like, so who do I send it out to? You know, like right. who should, you know, so I'm just going through that process. I was like, well, I'm not going to send it to the head coach because, <laughs> it, you know, it, the chance of him really seeing it doubted. I was like, I'm probably not going to send it to position coach, you know. Um, so what I did was I did some research and found out they had guys on staff called the director of player personnel of high school relations. And right. so I was like, oh. OK, so it seems like they communicate with high school, you know, athletes. And so I ended up finding about about 10, 15 schools, Division one schools um, in a power five. That I was like, OK, you know, uh, you know, I'd like to play for emailed them. Mm. I got back one response one. <laughs> two hours right. later. It was from uh, the University of Rutgers. And so, mm. um, you know, they responded. I remember the guy was Omar Hales. He responded. He said, my guy. And um, he hit me up. He was like, shoot me a text. Ended up texting him. He was like, uh, you got any offers? I was like, no, I don't got one. He was like, word? He was like, well, I'm about to check. And so literally the next day, they offered me my first scholarship um, to Rutgers. And uh, kind of from there, kind of snowballed. But even then, um, you know, got a couple good, nice little power five schools. You know, right. nothing crazy. I was a three-star coming out. Yeah. Um, I didn't go to any, maybe I didn't, you know, I didn't go to any camps. Here, so maybe that had, you know, something to do with it. Went to Nike right. or anything. Um, but no, I mean, you know, just kind of looked over. Uh, kind of went yeah. to small too so you know yeah that that's how it be that was kind of same thing i ain't really go to no camps and i think a lot of that is probably like our track background because like i know when they had the, some of the good camps and nike camps we was in like um districts and regions and stuff <laughs> okay. like that for track so you know focusing on that and stuff like that but it's different these days like see when i was coming out you know what i'm saying we didn't have all the social media and all the different stuff like that like we had the little tape that they had to send off and <laughs> hope that whatever school they got to they popped it in and checked it out or whatever but man that's a great story man and man you just got to keep that chip on your shoulder man and i, I like how how you going on about it man
Man, yeah, I know you coming to this league, and we got a lot of we got a lot of great young receivers um, in this league. Um, a lot of guys. What, what, who are some of the guys that you look up to or try to model their game or study? Study. So, so here's the crazy thing. Um, so from when I was eight all the way to my freshman year in college, mm. I played running back. So right. I was letting guys like you, you know what I'm saying? Like I was <laughs> guys like you. I was watching running backs, you know, coming up. So uh wide receiver was like a foreign language to me. You know, I was so used to playing right. running back. Um, you know, freshman year I had to learn how to, you know, play receiver. So that's kind of what I did was actually go back and just kind of watch, you know, people play the position, just kind of learn the position. So um one of my favorite guys is obviously Devonta Adams. He's kind of right. the first guy. I loved watching him. You know, he kind of took basketball and put it on, you know, put it on the football field. Right, you know, right. He had his own little, you know, deal with that, which I love to see. Um, I also like watching uh, Amari Cooper. I just love his quickness and suddenness yeah, at the line. Cool. cool. Um, you know, he's, I mean, he's still killing it in the game right now. Uh, mm-hmm. Possibly hopefully, uh, hopefully get to join him over in Cleveland. Mm-hmm. Uh, group right. of Cleveland Browns. So, oh, okay. That was yeah, uh... North East Ohio, but uh, yeah, yeah, so. Um, him also like Terry, uh, Terry McLaurin, uh, out of Ohio State. Mm-hmm. Real, real good dude. Young up and good come and do uh, yeah. like a lot. Uh, I like the Baltimore Ravens. I love Lamar Jackson, so I was watching yeah. um, you know, Hollywood Brown a lot. He was obviously a sh- you know short slider dude, um, mm-hmm. really short to do vertically. So uh, he definitely you know fit type of you know kind of my type of uh, you know skill set as far as just speed and vertical presence and stuff like that. Um, right. So I like as well, but um, those are a couple. Right, right. That's crazy, man. It's so much, so many things, man. Because like I know when I was like in high school, getting recruited and like going trying to go to college and stuff like that, a lot of teams wanted me to play receiver. But yeah. you know, back then, like receiver, like running back was a thing. Like you know, you're gonna get uh, 25, 30 carries uh, yeah. at running back. But it's different these days. Receivers are becoming more popular. You know what I'm saying? So right, right. I, I never really like. I think in this day and age, if I was going through the same thing, I probably would have switched the receiver as well. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But like, I'm I might have to call you one day. Come having the same problem. I got two twin boys, ten years old. Uh-huh. All they want to play is running back, running back. I'm trying to get them to switch over to receiver, so yeah. I'm gonna need help. <laughs> no, I mean, it's it's gonna be interesting too because you got you got guys like Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase. You know these these young kind of receivers that are like really changing the game as far as like you know you look at um you look at Tyreek Hill you know Jalen Waddle you know those type of guys where it's like you got you know a Tua who's a great quarterback but you know it's like these guys are making him even better than what he is you know what I'm saying exactly. Kirk Cousins you know so I think like even in the next you know year or two when they hit that next paycheck um that next contract you might see a shift as far as just the contracts as far as right. like might start getting paid that you know close to that um quarterback money where it's like right. now it's like you know they're gonna be the the ones that you know you're looking for because it's now like well i can have a subpar quarterback and still have you know success because you got guys that are gonna get open and just throw it in the vicinity and they're gonna make the play exactly exactly yeah. so yeah i know we talk a lot about the 40 and stuff like that and i know you prepping for the draft and the combine and stuff like that what are what are some of the things that you that you're working on yeah, so uh, so what I did was uh, I had to, I had to go back. Um, so when I was in high school, my uh, I want to say going to my junior year, uh, we had got a new coach. Um, you know, his name was Coach Frank Frank Lowry, and uh, he came from St. V. Uh, he trained you know a couple great guys: Dorian Grant, uh, Paris Paris Campbell, um, mm-hmm. over at Mary High School, LeBron's former school. And um, you know, he came over uh, to uh, to coach at my high school. And so, you know, from there, like, he just changed my whole outlook on as far as just training um, him and his daughter, uh, Chelsea. She helped me. They, they helped me so much. Like, they, they right. took me to another level. And so, um, you know, I was running times. Like, that was the time when I was doing indoor and outdoor. Um, I was running crazy times on the track. Um, they just took my speed to the next level. And so, uh, when I ended up leaving and I knew this process was about to happen and come up, I ended up hitting them back up. I was like, hey, you know, you guys knew me the best. You trained me, to, you know, you trained me the best. I had both faith and trust in you guys. And so I hit them up and I'm like, listen, I need your help. And um, so I went back to, you know, basically to my roots and uh, just hit them up. And, uh, you know, my agent and I, we got it figured out to where they can come down to Florida and they can end up training me. 
And, um, you know, so I've been doing that, uh, coming, just doing a lot of overspeed training, um, stuff like that. Uh, you know, just really just working on raw, just getting my raw speed. Um, Cause I know definitely like when I was at Cincinnati, you know, playing receiver, uh, you know, you have to learn how to use different gears and mm-hmm. you're not always in track mode, so to speak. And so, right. um, you know, so I hit back, you know, my track coaches back up and was like, you know, I got to get that, that twitch back, you know what I'm saying? And so right. um, that's been kind of the main focus for me is just really getting that twitch back, that burst, right. um, you know, that I once had, um, that I was at peak level when I, when I was in high school. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, so we, th- this is my last and final question for you before I let you out of here, man. We're going to do a little over or under. Or the 40 yard dash time. 424. Four. Over 424 four or under 424? Four four? Because we had a thing before you answer that. We had a thing when we was in the combine where it was kind of like a bad luck thing, or we would never say, like, so if people ask us what our what was going to run in the 40 or what our time was going to be, like, we'll never tell them an exact time. That's, you know, that's good. I saw so that's why I'm going to just ask you an over under. My time was a 424. Four. Over four two four or under? That's a tough one. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna. I'm gonna have to go. That's a tough one. You don't gotta give me no time. Just tell me over or under. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna give you. A, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go under four two. Under. Okay. Okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. I got. I got. Do got one question for you before before we before we head out. So growing up, who was one guy that you idolized and look up to when um you know when you were when you were playing? When I was playing, I oh, man, it's crazy. I always looked up to Barry Sanders. I always looked up to Barry Sanders, man, and like I just used to love the way he run, um, the way he break those runs and all that, man. I used to study his film, watch his highlights, all that for my high school games, for like college games and stuff. I used to always watch his highlights and stuff on YouTube. Shoot, I know you're going to the combine. I guess it's in a couple weeks or whatever, man. Any questions you have for me um, about the combine experience or anything? So, I guess taking it before before Indianapolis. So, like, kind of, what was your training regimen? You know, where did you go? What did you do before you uh, before you headed to Indy? Um, well, well, I was in Orlando um, or whatever down here with Tom Shaw. Um, you from Orlando, right? Yeah, uh huh, mm-hmm. from Orlando. So, like, like my whole thing was. Like all the other stuff, the like the drills, the jumping, the um, football, that stuff is gonna be what it's gonna be. You're gonna be player. You're gonna be what you're gonna be. Um, mm-hmm. So when I went for combine training, my my start, I always had a problem with my start. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was working a lot on my start because like once you come out and you run, you just gotta run. People put so much emphasis on the forty, trying to be technique and do all run perfect and pretty man just run so like i did my whole mindset was i'm gonna get my start right and then when i get my start right i'm gonna just run so like it, it just played out perfect for me i worked on my start a whole lot and then like once i got out and i got a good start i'm like i just go back to normal it's like riding a bike just run mm-hmm. don't put too much emphasis in it and just run and then when you get through the line you're gonna have a great time i already yeah, know I- it so, so I guess fast forward. And so, what was draft day like for you? You know, you had. I know you went. You went 24? 24. 24. Yep. Yeah. So, so what was draft it like? day. Draft day. Um, a lot of times people make it a, a lot, nerve wracking a lot, but it, it. I think once draft day come, the day before draft, you're gonna have an idea of like where you're gonna go, unless mm-hmm. something just drastic happen. And you drop down the draft board or something like that. Somebody trade up to get you early. But like I remember my draft day. Well, the day before the draft, um, because once you start taking these visits and stuff after the come out and stuff, certain like um position coaches and stuff, they're gonna have your number and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. the day, so I knew it was one or two choices when draft day came. I know I took a visit to Dallas. I know Dallas needed a running back. They had two, they had two picks in the first round. They had um 21 and they had 25. So I knew um I knew they was gonna take a running back. I know they liked me. I wasn't sure if they was gonna take me or not. But um then Tennessee had 24. 
the coach for Tennessee called me on the day before the draft and was like, man, we really like you. If you're there at 24, we're going to take you. So, so you expected I, to go first round? Yeah, I was expecting. By, by this time, like, after I ran my 40 and, like, all the – all the attention that I was getting and all the visits that I had and all the coaches that I was talking to, I kind of knew I was going to go first round, but I thought I was going to go to Dallas. I thought gotcha. I was going to go to Dallas. Hmm. So what about before then, like when you came out of college? Oh, when I like came out of college, I think I was projected like a, um, I think I was projected like a third round, third mm -hmm. round. Like I was like at first, like I was the number one ranked running running back coming senior running back but then when okay. all the juniors came out i dropped to like the fifth overall running back or whatever so okay. like i was projected like a third round like early like late second early third round pick or right. whatever you know what i'm saying then i, I ran the 40 or whatever after i ran the 40 it just it skyrocketed it's yeah it skyrocketed so yeah so back to my story like i so he called me and said if you there at 24 we're gonna take you so I'm like, all right, cool. But I'm a da growing up, I was a Cowboys fan, so I want to go to Dallas. So I'm like, man, I know if they, you know what I'm saying, if they pick at 21st, I might be gone already. And Tennessee uh -huh. thought I might maybe was going to be gone too, but they end up picking Felix Jones. So when Felix Jones went 21st, I already knew that I was going to go to Tennessee 24th. So, yeah. So when once you get all the way there, like, you know it's different when you see it on TV. And you watch yeah. the draft, and they sit there. And they, like a lot of times, they already know where they finna go, or the team that okay. been called them already when it's or whatever like that. So you I ain't gonna say you gonna know. Like my situation was a little different because I the running back coach for Tennessee. We kind of he went to East Carolina. He played running back at East Carolina or whatever like that. So he used to call me all the time, and right, right. Um, so that's why I probably knew a little bit more in depth. So I ain't gonna say you're gonna know exactly where you're gonna go or exact like that, but you by the time draft day come, you're gonna have an uh, idea. You're gonna have an idea. Interesting. Cause I do notice that I'm like, well, how they already got the hat? Like they just buy like 32 different hats and then just Yeah, come on. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool, yeah. cool, cool. Okay. Yeah. I guess um my last question would be so what was I guess the most frustrating thing um that you kind of went through during your draft process? During my draft process, um, I think I think the most frustrating thing with me was um, for me coming to us from a smaller school, right? Mm -hmm. um, you have all these guys, and I ain't gonna even just say like I ain't gonna even say running backs. I'm gonna just say all positions, period. Because like, not only that, I wanted to be the first running back, but I wanted to go early in the draft because I'm looking at all these other guys, so. I went to Tom Shaw, so we probably was so we were probably like um, fifty to sixty deep out there training, right? So we had guys all the way ranked like from top five, top ten, all the way to second round, third round, and I'm just seeing how good of a player I am. I'm seeing how I'm better than a lot of these guys out here. Right. Um, I'm better than them. I put up the stats. Um, you know, I the forty, I ran the forty, I did all that stuff. And it's just like, man, you just going through the process, you're going to really see how politics is. You're really going to understand, like, okay, they got this guy. They got this guy ranked. He's a top 10 pick, but he probably ain't like that. You know what I'm saying? But that's where he ranked that and or whatever like that. And it was just frustrating to me because I know I know where I was supposed to be ranked. I know where I was supposed to be drafted at. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, everything happens for a reason. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, I end up going to Tennessee, which you know that they, they their offense fit my my running style. It fit the things that they want to do to me. So, at the end of the day, I wanted to go high like that. But who's to say I would have had the type of NFL career that I had? You you go back and look at that draft. Majority of those guys that went ahead of me, they didn't have the type of career I had. So gotcha. it was frustrating. It, it was frustrating at the time, but like. Once it happened, got drafted, and got to the NFL, it, it ain't really mean nothing. So it, it happened for a reason. Got you, got you, got you. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so, man, you know, good talking to you, man. And, you know, like I say, my eyes going to be on you. I'm going to be paying attention, man, and, and best of luck at the combine. And I hope I hope you break that 40 record. I appreciate it, man. I'm, a, I'm coming for it. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>, sir. <laughs>